نحمد هو نصلي على رسوله الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي رب يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح ربي زدني علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم آتي نفسي تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها آمين يا رحمة الرحيمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today inshallah ta'ala we will talk about the ayat 5, 6 and 7 from surah Ali Imran and we will start with word by word meaning inshallah so um, ayah 5 first أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله لا يخفى عليه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء إن certainly definitely there is no doubt about it that الله الله سبحانه وتعالى لا يخفى خفي is something that is hidden so لا يخفى it's not hidden what is not hidden عليه from him على and he Minds together to become alayhi. Uh, so nothing is hidden from him. Shayun, uh, anything. So not hidden from him is anything, meaning nothing is hidden from him. Fil ardi, in al earth, the earth, wala and not, fis samai, in, fi is in, as samai, the heaven. So indeed, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing is hidden in the earth or in the heavens. Then I number هو الذي يصوركم في الأرحام كيف يشاء لا إله إلا هو العزيز الحكيم هو الذي he is the one who الذي the one who يصوركم shapes you so, uh, saw the wow in Ra Samara to shape, to mold, to sculpt. Fil Arhami in the wombs. Kaifa Yasha'u. Kaifa, how, however, Yasha'u, he wills. La ilaha, there is no God, illa, except huwa him. Al Aziz, he is the Almighty, and Al Hakim, the All Wise. So it is he, it is he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who forms you in the wombs, however, he wills. There is no ilah, there is no deity except him, the exalted in might, the wise. Then I number seven. هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات هن أم الكتاب وأخر متشابهات. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ بْتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَبْتِغَاءَ تَأْوِيلِهِ وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلَهُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ يَقُولُونَ آمَنَّا بِهِ كُلٌّ مِّنْ عِنْدِ رَبِّنَا وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُ إِلَّا أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ So in this ayah, Allah SWT is saying, هُوَ الَّذِي He is the one who, continuing from the previous ayat, He is the one who أَنزَلَ He revealed عَلَيْكَ Upon you or to you Ka here referring to Ka referring to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is the one who revealed to you al kitab the book minhu of it ayatun there are verses muhkamatun who are uh, absolutely clear muhkamat which are um, which are very clear which are stitched together which are um, which there is no ambiguity in them. We will go a bit more detail uh, when we come back to them. Hunna, they are, meaning these ayat. Hunna refers to these ayat. Hunna, they are Ummul Kitab. These ayat, which are muhkamat, they are Ummul Kitab. They are the foundation of the book. Wa ukharu, 
and there are others, meaning there are other ayat of the Quran who which are mutashabihat, meaning which have shubha in them, which have which have some doubt in them, which are um, allegorical in nature, which are um, pointing to something that. Uh, uh, there are few meanings of mutashabihat, but one of them is that they're pointing to something which is not, which is not very definitely clear. There, there is, there is some um, uh, we cannot totally get its reality in that sense. For amma, then as for for is then amma as for alladina those who fi kulubihim in kulubihim their hearts. Kulubihim uh, is mudaf uh, mudaf right? So kulubi him their hearts in their hearts zaygun is a zayg and what is zayg zayg is something which is a deviation uh, a crookedness which is uh, also has a meaning of a uh, downward kind of a deviation something that uh, collapses something a deviation that causes something to go down so in their hearts there is a kind of perversity there's a kind of deviation there's a kind of crookedness fayat tabiona so they do the uh, ittiba of taba'a like to to follow like we use it in the positive sense when we are following the prophets like do we have to do the we do the ittiba of the prophets we follow the way of the prophets but what they are doing they're following these people who have a perversity in their hearts they follow fayattabiuna so they follow because of this perversity in their hearts they follow ma tashabaha what is what has shuba in them what are the the ayat which are mutashabihat minhu of it of it meaning of the quran uh, and why are they doing it? Ibtigha'a, so they are seeking al-fitnati. They are seeking fitna. They are seeking to create a discord, to create a confusion, to create uh, to create friction. Wabtigha'a, and they are seeking ta'wili. They are seeking its interpretation. Uh, he referring to the interpret uh, the ayat, the ayat mutashabihat. Wama ya'lamu, and uh, do, uh, knows and does not know Ta'wilahu, its interpretation, illallah, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Warrasikhuna, and those who are rasik, those who are firm, those who are deeply embedded, fill in me in the knowledge. Yaquluna, they say, amanna bihi, we believe in it. Kullun, all, min indi rabbina, all is from our Lord. Wa ma yadhakkaru, and not will take heed or, um, uh, it, nobody will take heed illa except ulul albab those who are the people of who in who have who possess what albab albab is uh, like we say lubbe albab like the uh, the core of something like the the core of the fruit is its uh, most important thing the most fruitful thing so those people who have deep understanding they are called ulul albab and we we see this phrase many times in the quran so here allah subhanahu is telling us it is he who has sent down to you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the book, the Quran, and its verses. In it, there are verses which are precise, which are muhkam, which they are the foundation of the book, and there are others which are unspecific. And for those in whose hearts there is deviation from the truth, truth, they will follow that of which um, is unspecific, and they're seeking discord and they're seeking an interpretation which is suitable to them, like whatever they want to interpret it as. And no one knows its true interpretation except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those firm in knowledge, they say we believe in it. All of it is from our Lord and no one will be reminded except those of understanding. So inshallah, let's go back and see um, a little bit in more detail. Before we start with ayah number five, let's see the context that we uh, these ayat are uh, related to the previous ayat. So uh, in the beginning of Surah Al-Imran, as we covered last week, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Alif Lam Mim, from which we got a real orientation of uh, intellectual humility and coming back to this book with humility with intellectual uh, putting ourselves in a place of humility and seeking as a uh, as a beggar seeking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that uh, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al qayyum Allah there is no ilah there is no god there is no deity except him and he is al hayy al qayyum he is the ever living and he is the sustainer of all existence. Nazzala alayk al kitaba bil haqq. He is the one who revealed, revealed to you the, the book in truth. Musaddiqal lima bayna yadayhi. And it, it confirms that what, what is, you have already have, what is there before you. Wa anzala tawrata wal injil. And he is the one who revealed the Torah and the injil. Min qablu hudal lin nasi wa anzala al furqan. As a guidance for mankind, and uh, he revealed the criteria. Inna ladina kafaru bi ayatillahi, 
and definitely those who have believed, uh, disbelieved uh, in the verses of Allah, lahum adabun shadid. For them is a painful punishment. Wallahu azizun duntikam. And Allah subhanahu wa taala is almighty and all able to take retribution. So then, continuing from that, Allah subhanahu wa taala tells us that um, in this context, like. Um, when we look at this ayah, that continuing that Allah Ta'ala is the one who is Allah and who is the one and who has revealed this book and then he's telling us a little bit more him, about himself. So Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala is telling us here in ayah number 5, Inna allaha la yakhfa alayhi shay'un fil ardi wa la fil sama. Indeed from Allah nothing is hidden in the earth or in the heavens. So first thing is that this statement that uh, Nothing is hidden from him except uh, anything, whether it's on the earth or in the heavens. This statement is not valid for anybody except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in the context of the Christians who are being addressed and, and other people as well by extension is that uh, first of all, the question that comes in the mind is, was Isa alayhi salam like this as well? Was Isa alayhi salam like this that he knew everything that was in the earth and the heavens? No, and, and it, it makes a person want to think and um, uh, Quran kind of um, makes a person think, OK, just think about what you're saying. You're you're giving the status of God to a creation of God. And do you think that creation as as honored as he is, as much as we love Isa, as much as we honor him, he is one of the best people who have walked this earth. He is one of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are the distinguished people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet he was not the person and he is not the person who knows everything that is in the earth or the heavens, right? So, um, you know, like another thing is, when there is somebody who knows, there is an entity, there is a God who knows everything, everything that there is to know in the earth as well as in the heavens, and nothing is hidden from him. There is nothing at all that is hidden from him, no matter how small, no matter how big it is, then just imagine what kind of ilm does this entity have. It is. It cannot. It cannot um, even get in our minds how much ilm he has, how much ilm the al alim has. Like for example, if we were to say, let, let's, and that goes for any attribute of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Let's say, for example, we say that, okay, how big is Allah, right? Like, and people ask that, how big is Allah, and then Allah is al kabir. But what does that mean? Like, for example, and it's a silly example, but just to bring it to mind, if somebody says, how big is your refrigerator? In your mind, the image of a refrigerator comes and you're like, OK, it is this big. And then you can describe it in however way you want. How big is a pencil? You can describe that. How big is a cake? A, cake, a picture of a cake comes to your mind and you can describe it. And then, but if you were asked, how big is an ocean? Now we in in our mind the picture of an ocean comes, but there's no end to it, and there's no end. But that still is a makhluk of Allah Subhanahu wa That still is a makhluk of Allah Subhanahu wa That is on the earth, which when we see even in relation to the solar system is not even a dot, is is just like a dot, and let alone its position with respect to the whole universe, and that the whole universe that we know of is still the first heaven, and there is six more heavens which are progressively bigger in size, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is even bigger than that. So what but our minds cannot fathom that kind of um, that kind of uh, big. Similarly, the kind of ilm that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has, our minds cannot cannot fathom what kind of ilm that is because it is beyond our human comprehension. It is beyond. We can only look at examples to say bigger than this, bigger than this, bigger than this. But we can never we can never understand totally what kind of ilm he has. Luqman alayhi salam he said to his son that. If there is something inside a rock, which is uh, deep inside a rock, which is even uh, to the side of a mustard seed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows even about that. Right. And then Allah subhanahu why is Allah ta'ala telling us that? That just think about this, that the one who has this kind of ilm, he has sent this Quran to you. He is the one whose word it is. It is not a small deal, right? And if we compare it to our own ilm, like uh, what is our ilm like? If the whole, our ilm is like that it has happened in past and if it happens again, the whole aeroplane, a big plane disappears in an ocean and we can't find them. We can't find them. We And he, on the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows every creature, every particle in the depths of the oceans, the tops of the mountains, the earth, the sky, everything. And not only does he know about everything, he's taking care of it all. And if we think about ourselves, we need a manual to even take care of a fish tank, which is which can be like just 36 gallons or something. And to even take care of that, we need a manual. 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking care of the whole ocean and all the all the things in the ocean, everything that there is in the ocean, which kind of um, just by thinking about how much Allah, what is there, there is nothing that Allah doesn't know. And right when we when we think about the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just thinking about it, not not obviously we cannot encompass it, but just to think about that uh, uh, what all is in Allah's ilm, then we realize our own situation. Then we realize like we might be uh, PhDs or engineers or doctors or, um, you know, like double PhDs and uh, super intelligent people, scientists of the highest level. Yet when we think about ilm, then uh, and when we think about our own ilm as compared to the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we realize how how little we have. And then we realize the value of the ilm that Allah ta'ala gives us. We realize our own humility. We realize our own position in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then this also tells us that for the people who oppose the uh, the revelation, who oppose the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just think about it. You're using your mind, your limited small mind, which has such a little understanding and ilm, such a little knowledge, and you are using, trying to use that to stand up against the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're trying to use that little bit to go and stand and uh, fight against and uh, and people who make fun of or people who try to uh, ridicule or people who try to find faults. Um, obviously, they will not be able to, They but they, they still keep trying. And uh, if somebody goes deeper into what a lot of people say, um, and the kind of things that they put together, then they will. We will come to know anybody who's um, who's understanding enough and who's who does a bit of research. They understand that what people who oppose the Quran have historically, and even today, when people keep saying things, how little they have to actually stand on. But uh, this, I kind of tells us, like, really think about what you're doing, what you're standing up against, right? And um, it is, it is not said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all knowledge, but the way of saying it is like way, way stronger. The, the, the way that Allah ta'ala puts this in such a short uh, and yet such a powerful statement that the matter is just closed, that there is, there, there is nothing which is there um, in the earth or the heavens. And the earth and the heavens are just for us to understand. There is nothing that exists except that it is exposed to him. Everything and everyone is exposed to him. All the all that is um, zahir to us, all that is in the seen world for us, and all that is in the unseen world for us, that is also in front of him. He knows everything. And that that entity has given us the Quran. That entity is giving us the Quran. So trust in him. Uh, trust him what he's doing and um, listen and think and understand and follow what he's telling you. And um, you know, like, and sometimes what happens is whenever we read any book, let's say we pick up any book, what we like to do is to check whether, um, you know, to follow that book. Let's say if somebody is studying for medicine and they, they have a book and they, they have like a book from a library or something. Now, usually before they read a book, they will, they will see who wrote this book and what are the qualifications of this book, uh, the author of this book and this person, what all does they have and do they have, what have they studied, what kind of experience they have and everything. And then we kind of trust this book, which was not in our curriculum, but we just picked it up from the library. We won't just trust anybody for that, right? If somebody, uh, one of us has a major illness, we will go to the person who's qualified to take care of that and everything, right? And uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is while telling us about his book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about himself so that we know from whom this book is coming. And when we know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, when we start to know, we can't know him totally, but when we start to know him and the more and the more and the more we get to know him, the more his majesty, the more his glory comes in our heart and the more the glory and majesty of his word comes to our heart as well. And it is said, you know, the scholars say that the position that Allah's book has in your life is the position that um, you have for Allah in your life, right? So uh, the more you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more love, time, uh, akidah, effort you will give uh, to uh, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you will respect it, the more you'll utilize it in your life. In Allah. Um, so in ayah five and six, these two ayat are pretty straight, straightforward and clear ayat. There's no uh, um, there's no um, like ambiguity in these ayat. They're, they're pretty straightforward that in indeed from Allah, nothing is hidden. 
um, in the earth or in the heavens. And then he is the one who shapes you in the wombs of your mother. And there is no God except him, Al-Aziz Al-Hakim. But when we look at, look at these ayat in the context of where they are placed, then Allah, the scholars have uh, looked at a lot more meanings and a lot more lessons from them for us. Uh, one thing is that nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that he knows everything. That means he also knows what is hidden in the hearts of people. He knows and um, that who who knows and believes in this book and who doesn't believe and who uh, whatever they might be showing in the outside. Allah knows the kufr on the outside and he also knows kufr on the inside. He knows what the rabbis and the priests are hiding uh, at that time when this revelation was coming down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the things that they were hiding from their scriptures, which confirm the Quran. Like they would, for example, when they, they were giving their sermons and they know that, okay, something has been revealed in the Quran. Now, if we say that today, they were going to talk about a certain topic, but yesterday a revelation came that talked about that topic that they were going to talk about. And so now they say, okay, if I'm going to talk about this, then my people would, who are listening to me, who are like, uh, um, who were like, sincere people but they don't have too much knowledge but when they listen to me in their minds they'll be like this was what my muslim friend was saying this is the same thing that as my muslim friend was saying yesterday so maybe these are from the same god so so the rabbi would would um who ha who had deviation in his heart or a priest who had a deviation is that would change the sermon he's like no 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 i can't talk about this because then they would know that it kind of relates so they, they would hide things but what they forget is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows exactly what they have hidden and who has hidden it and how much they have hidden it and every word that they have hidden. Also, if you look at it, there are so many teachings um, from the previous scriptures that have that are even lost to the people of the book, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran. For example, he told us in the Quran about uh, Isa alayhi salam speaking as a baby and he was a baby and he spoke, which is not there in the um, in, in the Bible anymore. Um, he told tells us about the people of the cave, which uh, which is not there in the traditions of um, people in that much detail anymore and uh, he Allah SWT also tells us in the Quran about Ibrahim alayhi salam, that when he's leaving and walking away um, and he's been expelled from his uh, city and he's leaving and he's making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even those words there were no cameras that time there were no historians there were nobody doc documenting what he's saying but he made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved um, and many, 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 many thousands of years later, he brought it back and uh, for us and we read it till the end of the times. And he said, Ya Allah, provide for me a tongue that tells the truth about me in the last of people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his dua and he, he preserved those very words as well, which he made to make dua. Like, and then he sent the Prophet Sallallahu and then through the Prophet Sallallahu this dua that we make, um, we read and we will keep on reading till the end of times. People will keep reading, right? And, um, so what was Ibrahim alayhi salam saying that he, he um, that uh, whatever he went through and obviously people were making a lot of people were saying a lot of negative about him that he's he's the one who's breaking up families he was he's the one trying to go against our idols and this and that and pe his whole town his whole people which was so shocking for him the same people who loved him who cared for him are now uh, hating him wanting to even kill him and. Uh, then all these lies that have, and as he's leaving, he's making this dua that, Ya Allah, um, provide me a tongue that can tell the truth about me uh, later on. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved even the, that for us, which um, has not been, which is not there in the previous scriptures anymore, right? Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows exactly what it is. And he uh, He reveals from the hidden things which are hidden, Allah ta'ala chooses what to stay hidden and what what is to be revealed right and um, if we think about it then when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that nothing in the skies is hidden from him and nothing in the earth that has also an added meaning that the sky in the sky in the lohim of fools um, which which say, which we we'll know that it has everything the whole quran was there in lohim of fruit as well similarly uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the whole quran with him uh, and this whole Torah with him as well in pure unadulterated form in the sky with him and he knows what teachings have been corrupted from it and when and how and by whom and why also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that and in a way it reminds us that people have been um, too bold way too bold to make changes to divine scriptures like they didn't think what they're doing they're making changes to the divine scriptures or they have invented entire religions or today even religious practices 
but none of these changes have been hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows all misdeeds of all men. Whatever anybody has done, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows all of it. He knows the inward and the outward. He knows the soul of our deeds. He knows the intention of our deeds. And he has intentionally given some freedom to people because why has he done that? Why is he allowing people to do that? Because his intention is to take test of people in this world. In this world is supposed to be a test and the judgment in their case will be given on the day of judgment, on the day of reckoning. And any time, any furqan will come because this Quran, as we learned in the previous ayah, is a furqan. It, it differentiates. Any time a furqan comes, it creates a clash. It creates a difference. And sometimes it might feel that the, the evil is more powerful. It will feel, it can and it will feel that the evil, one, evil ones are more powerful on the earth. Like they have all the power, they have the money and at times, um, for most times actually, we will, we will see if we look at the history of uh, believers, we'll see that different times they were at a position of weakness politically, financially, socially. Um, they had less power in many terms. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling, uh, telling us is that he knows the reality of not just the earth, but also the heavens. He knows the reality that um, in the sky, there is the true power. There is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's legions and legions and legions of angels that are ready to take hold that, um, you know, that um, all this power, all these things, the real power, the real uh, thing, they might be hidden from us but not from him. He knows what is there. So even though, so in, in a way, it is um, it is um, a way, it's a consolation for us. It is a means of relief for us who are believers and who feel weak at times, who feel uh, like uh, people have overpowered us at times, who feel like, um, you know, like uh, we feel oppressed at times and people might be even making up stuff against us, which is not true. Then Allah, sub Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kind of, his word, gives us peace of mind and contentment that don't worry, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And whatever is happening is happening uh, because Allah ta'ala has allowed it for a certain period of time. This is not going to stay forever. Right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us a little bit more about himself. And uh, he already told us in the beginning, um, in the Ayat al-Kursi and also in the beginning of this surah, that Allahu la ilaha illahu wal hayyul qayyum. So he told us that he is al hayy He's the one who gives hayat, who gives life. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us a little bit more about how he gives life for us, for um, for us as the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, human beings. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shapes the children within the wombs of the mother. At another place in the Quran, in Surah Zumar, uh, surah number 39, ayah number 6, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He created you from one soul, then he made from it its mate. And he produced for you from the grazing livestock eight mates. He creates you in the wombs of your mother, mother's creation after creation within three darknesses. That is Allah your Lord. To him belongs dominion. And there's no deity except him. So how are you averted? So how does Allah Ta'ala create us? He, he's created, he gives us the shape. He, he molds us in three layers of darknesses. And what are these three layers of darknesses? There is the abdominal wall. There is the uterus, uterine wall, the, the wall of the uterus. And there's the amniotic uh, sac. And within these darkness and dark, these, these layers of darknesses, um, he creates us. And if you think about it, any artist of this world, let's say he's a very well-renowned artist uh, and he's going to create a model. Now to create a model, to create a sculpture, any artist, they need some lighting, they need tools, etc. And even to uh, to make the picture of a human even like let's say there is a they're making a sculpture of a of a famous politician or a famous leader then even to make that they they look at that picture or they look at a lot of, they do a lot of research to try to make that and they have they need to have a lot of tools and a lot of lighting a lot of things coming together the material and then it keeps breaking and they keep working on it and putting it together and it takes a lot of time and effort and when the sculpture is ready we look at it and we're like wow this is amazing. This person has done such a great work, such a hard work and everything. And what we and what we don't realize is even after all this hard work, even after all this commitment, all this thing, uh, a sculpture still cannot achieve the kind of symmetry 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes in a human body. The body, the baby, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates the face of the baby, the eyes, the ears, the, the eyebrows and how they are like well, how, how symmetrical everything is, how symmetrical our legs are. That even if like our toe were like um, a, a little bit, dis, uh, you know, like uh, the size was a little bit different from or one toe from the other, we would, we would not be able to balance so well. Right? And he creates not just outside, but even inside. There are body systems that are working. There's the digestive system. There's all, um, uh, there, there's so many circulatory system. There is the respiratory system. All these systems he created in such a small space, in such a small space in the human body. He's put so many systems who are working together all the time. And the body is moving and functioning. At the same time, we have these emotions and things happening. We are like a body, spirit. Everything is moving together. And and he is making all of the, he's made all of our face like this and he has sculpted us like that and he's the one who done, who has done that and he has he's the one who has done that how he likes right and uh, according to his will so one thing um about um uh, yusaw virukum uh, uh, from sod wow and raw which comes from something that that pulls that has attraction that pulls towards it like any any visual usually what happens with visuals is visuals attract us towards themselves also it is used for for the same root letters are used for sur on the day of judgment when the when the sur when the uh, horn will be blown on the day of judgment people will be attracted and they'll just they'll be just be pulled towards it and come and in this there's also a hint of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being al musawwir that he is the one who gives shape you know like uh, parents they cannot dictate how the child is going to look at look like we cannot dictate how we ourselves um would would have looked like like we had no knowledge or saying in how we were molded and this also again is an ayah which teaches us humility that last ayah told us that nothing is hidden from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you you know nothing. Everything is hidden from you, right? And um, also it reminds us that the one who creates a baby, a child inside the tummy of a mother, um, do you think that that entity will not be able to take care of the, the things in your life? Do you think that entity will not will not lead, uh, will not take care of who took care of you inside the womb of your mother will not take care of your life now? Will he not take care of your whatever circumstances you're going through or whatever things you're going through? Do you think he will not take care of you? And also in the same time, uh, Christians, if you look at uh, the addresses of these ayat, the Christians of that time, they are being reminded Isa alayhi salam himself as well was was in the tummy of Maryam alayhi salam. Did he have the power to shape himself? He did not shape himself. And does he have the power to shape children who are born every day inside the tummy of their mothers? How can he be God? Then understand, la ilaha illa huwa azizul hakim. Understand that there is no God except him who is al-aziz and al-hakim. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is al-aziz and al-hakim. And whoever comes to this religion, this religion of Islam with humility, and free from relig religious prejudice, from Tasub, will agree that there is no God except Allah. That the only religion acceptable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Islam. It is also the deal of um, Tawheed, that there is one God. Also, which what this ayah also tells us, which is very important, especially for, um, um, for uh, people in today's day and age, is let that sink in and which is a reminder for myself and and um, you and everybody else that, uh, that you know of let this sink in that my designer the one who designed me is he is he allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the most powerful and who is the most wise meaning he designed my face he designed the color of my skin he designed me and how why do i then how can i then complain or let anybody who speaks negatively about my looks or, um, uh, or or critiques me for whatever um, they can they want to critique on. I cannot let it uh, affect me internally because who created me? The one who is the most wise. How can I not be grateful for how I look? How can I criticize anything for myself based on my looks or for anybody else based on their looks? Whether, for example, in um, in the Indian subcontinent, particularly. Uh, a lot of girls are critiqued for being like, let's say, of the dark complexion because and they people are like the family is worried. How will she get married? What will happen? And this and that because just because she is dark and everything. But just just think about this. Who are you to 
pick up falls in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And also, if somebody is very beautiful um, in, in your bio-worldly standards, then what is their uh, accomplishment in being beautiful? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given them this beauty. Right? It is not, uh, uh, it is a point for them to also be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever beauty he has given them rather than rather than being arrogant about it or being proud about it right so either way we should uh, um, any if if we just actually look in the mirror and just look at our eyes and just um just look at our nose just look at our mouth just look at our ears and how proportionate like um usually we we are so in today's day and culture, we're used to so photoshopped images in magazines and everything, and just critiquing every and ourselves even, let alone other people, critiquing ourselves like uh, I have this little extra fat here, or I'm like, you know, if my mouth was like this, if my color of my skin, maybe I should use a brightening skin, or somebody who's fair skin, they want to tan their skin. Like everybody wants to to have something in their looks, what um what they don't have, or people are doing surgeries and Botox and they are. Um, trying to mold their faces all the time and everything. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us is that he is the one who has created you. Just look at it, look at yourself and you will see the beauty, right? And everyone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, their face, their features, their eyes, their colors, their lips, their eyelashes, um, everything is different. Even twins have slight difference. And even our mind gets boggled sometimes that who, like when we pick up a baby, for example, when we, um, th there is a baby and the baby is like, uh, we go to visit somebody who's just had a baby, or let's say the baby is like four months, five months old, and we are playing, and then we're looking at their hands and their tiny hands and toes and feet, and uh, even the lines on their hands, and we, uh, like everything is balanced in the right place. And we look at this baby and like, how cute and how beautiful is this baby? And who, who created this baby and made like this? Inside all this darkness of the mother's womb, when like there was nobody there creating, it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created. Even the fingerprints are all ready. It's like uh, when the child's born, the fingerprints are all ready and um, they're all, everything is balanced in the body. Right? And when the baby comes, everybody looks at the baby and everybody feels like most people, uh, most normal people, when they look at a baby, they feel this this rush of love for this baby, this, this little child which is there. And when we look at that, we say, Ya Rab, the, my Rab has created this. Similarly, when we look at ourselves, and that's why we make one of the duas that is there, that Ya Allah, uh, just as you have made me beautiful on the outside, Make me beautiful on the inside. What are we doing in that dua that the Prophet ﷺ taught us? We are acknowledging that Allah Ta'ala has given us beauty. Like we are so used to listening critique after critique after critique. And also our inner voice, which is always critiquing, that we uh, don't notice the beauty. That uh, just because other people around us don't notice the beauty um, doesn't mean that we have to be oblivious. So first of all, it's also a reminder to ourselves, reminder to myself first, that when we look at the mirror, uh, look at look at the beauty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and thank Allah for it. Not not to be proud or arrogant about it, but to say this this face that I have, my Rav gave it to me. So this I, I have to be grateful for this face and see the beauty in this face, how Allah Ta'ala has proportioned everything. The eyes in its place, the nose in it is in its place, the mouth is in its place, and I can use those faculties as well. They're not just they're not just really pleasing to look at. But there is just because like um, a few people who have been brainwashed by magazines and this and that, they cannot see beauty beyond a certain uh, stereotype doesn't mean that there is not beauty here. When I look at that beauty, I remind myself, Ya Allah, you have given me beauty and I'm grateful for it. And um, and please beautify my inside as well. And this same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's created me and you has sent this book has sent this book, the Quran. There is beauty in this Quran and there is utility. in it. There is benefit, there is beauty and there is benefit in this Quran. So, and that is why Ikrima and who, when after he became Muslim, when he used to open the Quran, he used to start crying. He used to open the Quran and start crying this and, and all he would say is, this is the word of my Rabb. This is the word of my Rabb. And he would start crying. And when we start um, loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more and more and more, we, we look at things around us and say, uh, my Rabb has made this. My Rabb has made this. This is my Rabb's word. This is my Rabb's. My Rabb created this, this, this tree. My Rabb created these animals. My Rabb created me. My Rabb created my these children, these children of mine. My Rabb created him them right and then that that love that that uh, love and that regard for the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come that mindfulness will come 
and then we also understand that there is no god except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when um, you know the the one who created me inside the tummy of my mother that ilah that rab he will not forget me now that i'm born right and um, uh, when we start uh, remembering something else or when we start doing something else we forget him but he does not forget him us uh, he has full authority and full decision nobody can nobody can literally um, you know like um, uh, nobody can challenge his thing and um, no matter how he made me that is his hikmat first of all he knew this is the best for me this look that i have whether i'm fat or i'm thin when i'm tall or whether i'm short whether i am uh, fair or whether i'm dark whether i'm um, you know like uh, whatever i am uh, it is his hikmat and just like we surrendered our minds to alif lam mim then we surrender our minds we surrender our hearts and we acknowledge his greatness in that all that is hidden from us is none of it is hidden from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right and again, it also reminds us again of Alif Lamin that I I know nothing. And then when we understand this, that uh, then we understand it even more. La ilaha illa huwa al aziz al hakim. That again, it's reorienting us towards the re revelation of the Quran. That how are we? What attitude are we supposed to have towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and towards His word? This is His word, right? And um, you know, like um. Another thing to remember is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created me in the womb of my mother. That means he is, which is a subtle reference to the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that he is the one who cares for me more than I care for myself. He has been taking care of me even when I was not born, even when I was inside the womb of my mother. Meaning I might have had complications in my brain and heart functions at that time when I was in um, in the womb of my mother but he was still taking care of me he was he fixed all of them for me right and i didn't even know about these complications that were there but who was solving them he was solving them who was solving this my development from a fluid uh, from a drop uh, within a drop within a drop and then from those he created this whole body that like look at our hair like like our skin um he made from that same drop he made the skin and hair and bones and so, uh, the science is still silent on how does a drop change into uh, the bones and hair and skin, which all so many different characteristics, right? Like, for example, when we take a wood from a tree, we can make furniture out of it. We can do things out of it, but it still stays wood. How does this drop of water um, change into this hair and the skin? Like the skin, if you get a small cut on the skin, we 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 like we we scream in pain sometimes, and that pain lasts for so many days, and then we still remember that initial initial pain when something poked us. Yet if we take our hair and we clip or we chip off the ends of it, we feel no pain at all. How is this? Have, both have soul, both are the part of our own body. Yet why does one part hurt and one part doesn't? Right? How did how did Allah Subhanahu wa Taala create and how did He put things in such a a beautiful way and then now that we are born now we are um you know like um now we now we are born and when we sometimes a lot of people when they come to the quran and we and, and islam and they see some rulings of the quran then okay you're supposed to leave this and you're supposed to do this and then all of a sudden they think or they say things like um this is so difficult we can't take do this and everything and some even think that um uh, he's putting you in difficulty that he doesn't care for you how can you think that have you forgotten who you're dealing with that it is the love and care of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he created you and it is also his love and care that he sent you this revelation this revelation is not meant to make life hard for you in fact this revelation is meant to uh, to to help you to make things easy for you right like uh, uh, like uh, there's a hidden element to our creation uh, part of it of our creation is and it relates to the previous eye as well the part of our creation is from the earth and part of our creation is from the skies meaning we are made up of a body and a soul the body is from the earth and the soul is from from the skies and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows both parts although it is it was in turn entirely hidden from us and the soul is so mysterious to us that even allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that you have only very little knowledge about it you don't know too much about your own selves your real self is the soul but even about that you have allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you some knowledge but it is very little knowledge compared to all that there is to know about it right and um, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you some authority, but but some, a very little authority over yourself even, right? And he, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the most wise about what era should you have been born in, what languages you should learn. Uh, he's the one who decides which revelation you're going to follow. And therefore, he is the one who has sent you this Quran. And, uh, you know, this revelation takes into consideration because he knows everything, because he knows you better than you know yourself. He loves you more than you love yourself. He has sent you a revelation that takes into consideration your part of from this earth as well as from the skies he knows like you don't even know that you have physical emotional and spiritual needs and this revelation came to balance all these needs so that you can lead a happy life and your burdens can be lightened like um, we as human beings we have a tendency to disbalance which will cause problems when we go towards spiritual side we try we do so much of one thing and other things like suffer like we we are so much into studying 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 that okay okay we have not given enough time to our children or ourselves or our own health is suffering or we are feeling burnt out or everything or we are doing so much into the um into the day-to-day -day food and sleep and this and that that we are not even uh, um praying around salah we are not doing anything like as human beings we have a tendency that we go and th this is our tendency for each one of us, not just anyone in particular, but all of us have this tendency that when we go towards one thing, we tend to disbalance. And it is Allah's book. It is Allah's revelation. It is Allah's re um, guidance that helps us to bring, brings us back to a balance together. He knows us better than ourselves and he knows best what revelation to send, which is the best in our favor. So this Quran, when we come to this Quran, come to it with the feeling knowing that it is from my Rabb who knows me better than I know myself and he has given me things which is best. He, he has given me the guidance and he's giving me the guidance which is the best for me, right? And um, it also reinforces that he knows, just like he knows all his creation in a manner that no one else can, no one should be also in any delusion that they can escape his justice. He is Al-Aziz. Al-Hakim, um, he is the most wise and he's also the almighty. And we should remember that the almighty and all wise has created this world and placed human beings on the earth for a higher purpose. There's a higher wisdom to it. And um, no one should be in a delusion that, you know, they can escape his justice or they can evade it. Um, that, uh, you know, th there's there's this notion nowadays that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is neutral in all matters, like good, bad, evil, or uh, good or bad, or uh, justice or injustice. It's, 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 all, it's all going to be fine that like after this world finishes, after this life finishes, it's all going to end. And it doesn't matter how you behave in this world. Everybody is just going to just finish. That 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 does not make any sense because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Aziz Al-Hakim. He has sent, he has created you, but he has created you for a purpose and you will be accountable for it. So no matter what you do, um, he will take into account mithkala zarra. Like, like even, even the smallest to the smallest to the smallest bit that you know, the, sm the smallest particle that you know of, whether it's an atom or a neutron or a proton or even smaller than that, whatever smallest you can think of, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of every little bit and account for it. And account for it on the basis of what? Account for it on the basis of this book. This book will guide you and how you follow this book will tell you. So when somebody stands up to oppose this book, then know what you're doing. Know who you are standing up against. Right? So the next ayah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he is the one who revealed to you this book, the Quran. Out of it, there are verses that are muhkamat, which are of established meaning, uh, which are the principal verses of the book. And some verses are mutashabihat, whose, whose definite meanings are not known. There, there are bit, there, there's some doubt in them. There's some ambiguity in them. Now, those who have, and that is, Allah SWT knows everything though. First of all, Allah Ta'ala, there's nothing hidden from Allah Ta'ala. But from us, some things have been deliberately hidden. Some things Allah Ta'ala knows, and if he wanted, he could have made everything muhkamat. But if he has made some mutashabihat, that is his wisdom too. Now, those who have perversity in their hearts, though, those who have a deviation in their heart, what they do is, they, they do, they're not interested in muhkamat. Ayat, because Bukamat Ayat, there's nothing controversial to create out of it. It's very clear. Like pray, you need to pray and you need to give zakat. You cannot, you cannot reinterpret it. You cannot, um, you cannot um, do anything with it, right? So, um, um, so for that, um, you know, like um, 
uh, they are not interested in those. So people who want to create a deviation, people who want to create a, a harm, people who want to create a friction in the society, discord, uh, who want to create a fitna, they run after the mutashabihat because they want to reinterpret things in their own way and create these problems, right? And uh, while nobody knows its interpretation except Allah and those well-grounded in knowledge, and those who are well-grounded in knowledge, what do they what do they do when all these uh, all these friction are created, all these things are created? They say we believe in it, all of it is from. We believe in it, all of it. We believe in all the ayat of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They are all from our Lord. Meaning, only the men of understanding they observe the advice. So. First thing to understand here is that um, we are um, we are so intelligent in the matters of this dunya that whenever let's say some major illness comes to somebody, then we don't just go to see anybody with no knowledge. We go to a specialist. If we have a certain problem or if our child has a certain problem, we go to a specialist who specializes in that kind of a problem, and then we go and seek knowledge and guidance from them, right? So we we go to somebody who has the knowledge about something to guide. So Similarly, for seeking guidance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who knows everything. Then why are you going here and there to seek guidance? Why not seek guidance from the one from whom nothing is hidden? Right. So, and it also reminds us that one of the biggest rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ar-Rahman Allam al-Quran. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Ar-Rahman uh, that his biggest rahmah is that he taught us the Quran. So the biggest rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we were in a way like we were blind. And he is showing us the way now, like he's he's showing us the way, and he's um, and that is his love, that is his rahma uh, for us, right? And what does he show us? The the hidayah. What, what does he show us? What what way does he show us? He shows the way of living in this life also, and the way of reaching jannah as well, right? And to give hidayah, it's it's important. Who can give true hidayah? True hidayah, true true uh, hidayat can only be given by someone. First of all, he should be al hai himself, that he is living. If somebody uh, who is living today but not living tomorrow and then living again and everything, then he cannot give us guidance all the time because there is a per period of time when he was not there or he, he was not there or he will not be there, then that entity cannot give us guidance. Somebody who is al hai is capable of giving us guidance and who is Al-Ali, meaning who knows everything, that is uh, either hidden or evident. The one who knows everything and who is living is the one who can give us guidance, right? Um, and um, so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling us that, um, helping us understand that He is the one who is the one who's deserving of and capable of being the Lord and being the Ilah. Why? Because He's the one who knows what people wants and what people need, um, and He is the one who has given us this book and um, this guidance so that we don't fall so that we don't it is his love his his favor his rahm that he has sent this guidance to us it's like uh, parents when they tell their children uh, different things like okay uh, my child don't do this and don't do this from their own experience they tell they, they tell their children things why because they don't want their children to um, suffer in the same things that they themselves suffer like the the things that where they fell they want they don't want their children to fall so they the parents Keep telling their children those things, right? So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala teaches us those things so that we don't have to, we have we don't have to learn everything from experience. We can learn some things we learn from experience, but some things we can learn by the experience of other people or by the guidance that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling us through the Quran about the experience of other people, and then we can take lesson from that. And also in the Quran there will be certain ayat which are muhkam. And there will be certain ayat which are mutashabih. And uh, what is the difference between these two? Muhkam. Muhkam means uh, from hakama, like things which are tied in together, which are stitched together. Uh, and Allah SWT is al-hakim, he said in the previous ayat, right? So what are muhkam ayat? Muhkam ayat are those which are uh, which we can understand, which which we can which we can implement. They are clear stories. They are, um, or they could be ayat of nature, which are there in the Quran. They are ayat about ibadah. They are about uh, ayat about ah akhlaq. They are about uh, ayat about furs. They are uh, ayat about virasat. Like this person will get this much share. This person will get which much this much share. It's very clear. You there's no ambiguity in them. You cannot. Uh, you can even by just reading the tra uh, translation, you can get what it means. Yes, you can go deeper, but you cannot. You cannot twist them. They, they, it is very clear. It's it's like right there in the open. The the ayat, ayat about tawhid, the ayat about different laws. They're all very clear. The Sharia. They're all very clear about muhkam. 
Imam Ragib, he says that muhkam ayat are those who's, uh, who, who, who are bayin, they're, they're very clear, they're very evident, and there is no, um, in their words or meanings, there's no type of doubt in them that's possible. Right? For example, aqimu salah wa atu zakat. There is no doubt. It's totally clear. It tells us to do something, go pray, and go give zakat. There is no ambiguity in that. These ayat, they we um, these these ayat are the ummul kitab, meaning they are the backbone, they are the base, they are the foundation, they are the um, you know the, uh, they are the intention, they are the asal of it. Um, so uh, towards which we make um, our intention, like um is also used for like a mother, right? So they are um, and what is a mother usually like for a child? What is a mother that they keep going back to her? Like if if a child has nothing else, what they will say is they'll keep calling on mom, mom, mom. They they will. They, they want a mom more than anybody else, even more than father uh, at most times. Like, so they would, and sometimes mothers get irritated. Why do you have to like, can you just, just do something on your own? Why do you need just me all the time? But it is because a child's heart will feel rest only with the mother, right? Like it's the kind of bond which is there. So, um, and that is the foundation, right? So similarly, the implication of these um, ayat, there can be many, many implications, but there's only, the meaning is only one. They're like a seed and uh, with the tree and many fruits, but the seed is very clear, right? The, it's very, um, and they're very tightly knit. And um, at one place, the ayat, um, what another meaning of hakam is they prevent, to prevent wrong from happening. Like a ruler is called hakim because he prevents wrong from happening. The, the reins of a horse, the, the same root letters are used. Why? Because the reins of a horse, they prevent the horse from going in a wrong place. The building is well cemented together. It's called muhkam because it, it can't fall apart. Right? So hikmah is also something. Another meaning of hikmah is hikmah is something that prevents us from doing something that should not happen. Right? So um, the ayat of the Quran are stitched together. And, um, you know, like we can't pay attention to one and ignore the other. Right? That is, um, these muhkam ayat are those ayat that prevent any misinterpretation from happening, like a brick that cannot be removed. Right. And um, clarity, this also teaches us that the clarity of the ayat of the Quran has to do also with how they are put together. Allah Ta'ala has put them together. Right. And uh, Quran wants us to think a certain way. And that way of thinking comes from muhkam ayat. And once that is clear, uh, we will we will know how to think about the other ayat as well, which are the mutashabe ayat, even if we have no knowledge, right? And uh, sometimes when somebody is researching a topic in the Quran, what they do is, um, what is the way to do is, is you first go to the muhkam ayat, you read, understand, um, uh, you know, like according to where they are placed and what are the meanings of these ayat, and we go through that, and then we go to the, if we go for like let, let's say we are researching a certain topic in the Quran let's say we are researching about what is taqwa or we are researching about what does uh, the Quran say about women and we look at a certain topic then we, we uh, when somebody has studied the whole Quran um, and they know which are the muhkam ayat they read and understand those first and then they go to the mutashabiyah then they go to the men other mentions at other places and then look at the mutashabiyah ayat in the light of the muhkam ayat not the other way around like if we don't go to the step two before step one, because that um, if we don't put things in the right order, then things can be misinterpreted. Right. So Quran tells us uh, us how to live our life. There, it tells us about halal, haram, ibadat, mamlat, nikah, talaq, iddat, kars, uh, anything related to this dunya and all these things. All these things which are related to this dunya, which are very clear, those are muhkam. Mutashabih are the things. One of the meanings of mutashabih is shubah, which is doubt. So. Uh, uh, you know, the two things which seem similar and they're kind of like mixed up together. Like you, you, it could be this, it could be that. And a lot of times mutashabih refers to the ayat which are talking about things from the ghaib, like um, alam -e arwa uh, or the akhira. We know descriptions of akhira, but what exactly akhira is going to be like, we will know only in the akhira. What exactly does barzakh look like? What does the life in Kabr look like? What does hashar and nashar look like? What do the angels look like? What, um, what, uh, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does it mean by, uh, what is the, uh, how does the arsh of Allah look like? What does it mean by, there's a hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this? And um, uh, what does it mean by how he, is he on his arsh? And, uh, you know, and even Jannah, we can't imagine. Like even Jannah, which is a makhluk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can't even imagine Jannah um, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that we can't even imagine that. Then let alone um, imagining the creator. We cannot imagine 
many of his creations we can't even even imagine what they are like so we we have there is no way that we can imagine what is the creator like right so th there is doubt in these matter and when somebody yes we can take lessons from different ayat and something but when somebody just takes the mutashabe ayat and uh, put something this is what it is and I know exactly what it is, and this is this, 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 then that is um, creating a problem because that is something which uh, which is mutashabe. And all we can say is, in my um, understanding, it might be this and Allahu Ta'ala Alam, right? So what is required of us is that for the muhkam ayat, we read on them, we ponder on them, we implement in them. And for mutashabe ayat, we, we understand, we, we try to understand, we study, we believe it. And most important is we believe it even if we don't understand, right? We do war fikr on the muhkam ayat. Uh, you do research on them, no problem. They are the foundation. It is um, not right to interpret the Quran in a manner that goes against the muhkam ayat. And whenever um, there is a doubt in something, then you go back to the muhkam ayat and refer to them. And and, and that is a study that, uh, that uh, comes after somebody has studied the Quran in a lot of detail that which are the muhkam ayat and how do you look at that and everything. And um, mutashabe ayat, uh, for mutashabe, there are like different levels. Um, and scholars have said, uh, mentioned three levels. Uh, one is mutashabe ayat are those, the meaning of them only Allah knows. Nobody knows. For example, alif lam mim. Nobody else knows the meaning. Only Allah knows the meaning. There are some people who have come. Maybe Aleph ref refers to this. Maybe Lam refers to this. And maybe Mim refers to this. And in doing so, what they're saying is, even by what we can think of, it is so grand and everything. And But Allah Ta'ala Alam. Allah knows what is the meaning. We don't know. We're just thinking about this. So there are some things only Allah knows. And the best way, the safest way is Allah knows about it. And I still believe in it. There are some things which are, um, uh, which are mutashabe which were mutashabe before, but which have become muhkam now after some scientific or archaeological discoveries. For example, the inside the womb of the mother, uh, the development of the embryo and what it looks like and everything there, the ayat of the Quran who, who refers to different stages. But at the time the Quran was revealed, it was all mutashabe. Nobody had uh, nobody had sonograms at that time. Nobody could look at 3D images of the baby inside the womb of the mother. Nobody could look at what it looked like as it was developing. They were still mutashabe, but people still believed. The believers still believed in them, even though they didn't know um, uh, the uh, they didn't know the physical manifestation of it. Today we see it, and they have become muhkam for us. So there are certain ayat of the Quran that are mutashabe at a certain time, but they become muhkam after a certain period of time by when Allah Ta'ala allows for certain scientific discoveries and or archaeological discoveries to be made. There also the third category is some uh, mutashabe ayat, the meaning of which can be reached by rasikun film. And who are rasikun film? People who are deeply, deeply, um, uh, you know, like immersed in it. And those people who do a lot of like, a um, um, lot of, um, uh, research a lot of the, they they put their time heart into the end they are called rasikhun film and, and um what is the literal meaning of rusuk little meaning of rusuk is like if we if you look in back home in diff, um like say india pakistan those countries what do they do is they take um this cow dung and they make like little uh, round things from it and then they put it on mud houses on there and then when it dries up it becomes really really hard then it has become rusuk it has become dried and um, another meaning is when rain water comes and it goes deep in the land and it, it's completely absorbed, then it's like Rusuk, then it has become like deeply absorbed in it, right? So there is a there is a, something which has gone deep and strong and firm and something that takes, there, there's a there's an overtime thing involved in this and there's some effort is involved in it and everything. We can also imagine like a nail which is hammered in a wall. When a nail is hammered in a wall, a lot of it goes in, a little bit stays out, right? So a lot of it has gone in and there's an effort that has gone into it. So there is uh, Rusuk, there is like um, for something to be held on to very end and stayed firm with a lot of firmness and which is like literally immersed in, in something, right? So that that is Rusuk. So Rasikun Fil Ilm, they are those people who are not just, they don't just like have uh, surface level knowledge. They don't just listen to a Jumma khutbah here or there or just listen to this, there's here and that, there's there. They are deeply rooted and mature in knowledge. Um, and those people have been praised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much. And this is not from reading the Quran once or studying the Quran once. This is from 
learning it again and again and again and again and discussing and uh, doing um, implementing that and putting sacrifices for the sake of getting this in. Like if Allah Ta'ala wanted, all of us could have been born with this in. Just like he created us with our faces, with our bodies, with our functions, things going, he could have created us that when we were born, we had the full knowledge of Arabic uh, language and the grammar and the uh, balaga and the tafsir and the tajweed and everything a person would, he he could do that. He is, kun, uh, he is sahib kun fayakun. If he said kun, we, would, we could have been born like that. But he has made it such that for these things we'll have to strive and we'll have to put some effort into it we'll have to and in that effort is what uh, what uh, what he likes right and uh, so these people when these people of ilm what happens to them um, and, and there are different examples in our tradition is like uh, you know the aslaf before us they didn't give used to give certificates to their students when they finished certain study why because they said two things one is we don't want them to have a certificate and feel that they not they can now leave the journey of seeking ilm it's a lifelong thing they don't leave the journey of seeking ilm ever Another thing is we don't want our students to become a victim of pride. So they would never give a certificate to their students. They were like, okay, you keep studying and keep benefiting, right? And just a little bit of ilm is very dangerous. You know, it's like a, it's like when we are cooking rice and we like, you know, you know like um, raw rice gets some air, then it, it doesn't cook properly. Or if a, a chair has a wobbly leg and you make somebody sit on it, it's not been formed yet, it's not been nailed in properly, then it's it's not good enough to sit on, right? So uh, ilm has to be firm. Imam Mujahid, who was a student of Ibn Abbas, anhu, he studied the Quran with him 30 times uh, before um, he started doing something. Imam Malik, uh, uh, for um, understanding one masla, one thing, uh, there was one masla that he wanted to study and he studied the Quran three, 300 times to understand that masla. And he said for 299 times he didn't understand it. But he, when he read the 300th time, then he understood it. The Aslaf, used, the Aslaf used to keep wishing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts them on the journey of ilm. Like Ibn Taymiyyah, he used to say that when he would not understand any ayat from the Quran, he would stand, spend from the morning till the afternoon on pondering over that until he would uh, get that. And he would make the dua, Ya Mu'allim Ibrahima, Alimni. O teacher of Ibrahim, uh, give me ilm as well. The one who gave ilm to Ibrahim, give me ilm as well. Ya Muha, uh, Ya Mufahima Sulaimana, Fahimni. Oh, the one who gave the Fahim to Sulaiman, give me Fahim as well. Imam Muslim, he was uh, trying to, he was busy in studying one hadith and finding its meaning and everything. And somebody gave him like a, ba a basket full of dates. And he was so busy in studying about that hadith that he kept on eating those dates and he didn't realize that. He ate so much that he passed away due to this condition that happened because of that. And Anas ibn Malik says uh, uh, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his own people among mankind. And they said, um, uh, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi who are these people? Uh, Allah has his own people among mankind. Who are these people? Who are Allah's people among the mankind? And um, he said, these are the people of Quran, the people of Allah, and those that are closest to um, uh, to. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah ta'ala make us of those people who are closest to him. And the opposite of it is um, a deviation which, which is zaid, which is like uh, the, the real opposite is like uh, after you get hidayat, after you Allah ta'ala has given you hidayat, then to fall down. And it is said, the scholars say that uh, it is easy to walk on a straight, uh, uh, you know, like a, a, a straight uh, a straight uh, land it is very straight but when you climb a mountain then it is much harder to walk after you've climbed a mountain and that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving bringing our attention to um that you know it is uh, um, somebody who deviated means they were on the straight path at some point they they did understand they did get the hidayah at some point so it also teaches us humility as students of the quran it also teaches us is that we should remember and we should always guard ourselves that there are times that we can um, fall prey to uh, deviations and people will bring deviations, right? Um, and uh, even we will come across people who will bring deviations and to guide, to guard ourselves against them. And um, Aisha uh, said that the Prophet ﷺ recited this verse of the Quran and then she said um, the um, uh, that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ then said, 
when you see those people who follow that which is mutashabih in the Quran, they, they keep following that. They're not interested in muhkam. They want to just create controversies. They want to say, oh, I have found this new thing and they will keep bringing these new practices or new deviations and everything. Then avoid such people or avoid um, avoid um, uh, going to just these verses by itself, right? So uh, to the effect of that. So and the thing is that we have to uh, protect ourselves. Another thing here is that at one end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned people with deviation in their hearts, like um, uh, pure, um, like they have some evil in their hearts. On the other hand, he didn't say people who have good hearts. Rather, he said people who are rasikun fill in. And what does this teach us? This teaches us that the true absorption of knowledge is not, um, first it happens over time, but its first absorption is not in the mind, but it is in the heart. True knowledge of the Quran is in the heart. We engage in the tadabbur of the Quran, we ponder over the ayat, we learn the more ilm and everything to, to, to basically serve our heart first and our minds, our minds follow it, right? Um, and even Ibrahim al -Islam asked for the final messenger and that revelation that would give uh, what? Kalb salim that would give us the sound hearts and that's the only thing that matters. And um, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was asked um, that who has pukhta ilm? Who has who have who are the people of who are rasikun fil ilm? And he sallallahu alayhi wa told us to the effect that those people who when make when they make promises, they are true to their promises. Who who do who who do clear, honest, true talk, like clean talk, and whose heart is pure and firm, whose stomachs are pure of anything haram, and who protect their private parts from zina. Also, we should also try to surround ourselves with such people because that would uh, that that uh, that um, that uh, feeling of calmness of heart and the curbing of curiosity, unnecessary curiosities, is also infectious. When we when we are with people who are engaged in deep knowledge, then it also rubs off on us. We we get that feeling of calmness as well. We get this feeling of purpose as well. We stay away from things with a mutashabih as well, right and. Um, uh, our our revelation has a lot of knowledge. Quran gives us a lot of knowledge about law, theology, history, science, language, etc. But in the end of it, it's knowledge. The base of it all is spirituality. And um, we have to ask ourselves, what, what do we want for ourselves? Shallow or deep knowledge, right? And when Rusukh comes to us, then even our duas change, which we'll learn in the next week, that what are the kind of, when people become uh, such kind of people, then what are the kind of duas that they make? And Allah Ta'ala says that from this, um, taking a lesson from all of this will happen only for the people who are the people of, um, the, people of ulul, uh, the people who are ulul albab, meaning the people, these lessons, which the Quran teaches, they're easily forgotten. And deviation can come except for Ulul Albab, the people of sound understanding. Now, this group of people is introduced here, Ulul Albab, and this is talked more um, towards the end of the surah. When what do the people um, who are Ulul Albab do? They ponder over day and night and they do different things that we will also see in the end of the, uh, the surah, Ali Imran. And, um, uh, and then we learn in the next ayah how even the people who are seeking knowledge, they are super scared and they make, they make the dua. And what are the kind of duas they make? May Allah Ta'ala make us of those people that understand that this book is from him. Him who, uh, he he is the one who besides whom there is no God. He's the living and the giver of life. He's the maintainer. He sent down the previous books and this book with the purpose of tasdeeq. Um, he is the one who sent guidance to previous people. He is the one who revealed the standard. He is the one who is severe in punishment. He is the one who is able of, all able of retribution. He is the one, nothing is hidden from him in the skies and the earth. He is the one who molded me and you and everyone I know in our mother's womb as he wanted. He is the one who's almighty. He is the one who's all wise and he is the one who has sent this book down to me as I engage this book. May Allah Ta'ala make me and you and all of us be the ones who remember that we have no authority over this book. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and his book have an authority over us. We will never be able to unlock the mysteries of this book ourselves. He will give to us what we decide. May Allah Ta'ala give to us more. May Allah Ta'ala, just like he gave to Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam, just like he gave to Sulaiman Alayhi Salaam, may he give to us as well. And as we read the book, may he make us of those who reaffirm our faith in him all the time. Every time we come to the book, uh, to his book, to his guidance, to his rahmah, we reaffirm re re to ourselves 
and to him, la ilaha illallah, may Allah make us of those people who appreciate his rahmah, who uh, understand the importance of his book, who understand that uh, when he's mentioning his book and when he's uh, mentioning that his book was revealed to you, every time we read this book, we are also deeply indebted to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam his beloved messenger and our beloved messenger who with whose efforts and after whose sacrifices because of whose sacrifices today we have this guidance with us may allah ta'ala make us of those people that come together for his sake which uh, and whom he loves and who love him may allah ta'ala accept this coming together for us despite our mistakes any goodness that comes from today or any other talk by myself or anybody else anywhere in the world is all goodness is from him and him alone because he, alone because he owns all the goodness and all shortcomings from today's talk are mine um, as I'm human and open from open to mistakes. May Allah Ta'ala accept me and you despite our mistakes, despite our shortcomings. And just like Allah Ta'ala united us as sisters in Islam in this world, may Allah Ta'ala reunite us as sisters in Islam under the shade of his throne on the day of judgment when there will be no shade except his. And then once again in Jannatul Firdaus. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samiyul alim. Amin ya rahman rahimin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Subhanaka Allahumma. Ashhadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka, nastaghfiruka, nastaghfiruka. Wa natubu ilayka.